We begin our worship today with a thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters which make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us, and we shall be satisfied. Heal us, and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I 
A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. A reading from John 3.16. We know love by this, that Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. A reading from John chapter 10. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Lord is my shepherd. What is it about the 23rd Psalm that almost universally brings comfort and sometimes tears to people? Sentimentality? Perhaps. But I think it goes beyond that. 
I believe it's more profound. I think it goes to the very depth of our being. I would suggest to you that it's the quality of belonging. It's the act of being carried when I can't take another step. It's being valued and cared for and loved. It's pure grace. Is there anyone with breath who doesn't need grace? Fred, Gre Fred Geiser was a professor at seminary when I was there, and he gave some insights into this psalm, into the universal appeal of Psalm 23. Geyser said that the psalm, Psalm 23, is a psalm of trust. Trust. It springs from the lament that says, why have you forsaken me? And ironically, Psalm 23 is, the Lord is my shepherd, while Psalm 22, the psalm before that, is actually a lament. It starts like this, Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Remember, those were the words of Jesus from the cross. So 22 is a lament, and 23 is the answer to that lament. Perfect. Psalm 23 serves as kind of a creed. When we recite a creed, we recite what we believe, and we recite something about ourselves as well. When we recite Psalm 23, or when we hear it or read it, we're really saying who God is. God is the shepherd. God is my shepherd. And what has God done? God has provided me with nourishment and protection. It's almost as if Psalm 23 says to the lament, you don't have the final word. Even though I walk through this lonesome valley, God is with me. I am not alone. I remember a song from childhood. I'm not sure if my dad sang it or I just heard it on the radio. It went something like this, the lyrics. You have to walk the lonesome valley. You have to walk it by yourself. Nobody else can walk it for you. And the last verse says, Jesus walked the lonesome valley. He had to walk it by himself. The idea was that Jesus experienced the walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and that can be comforting to others of us who are valley walkers. I like the idea that Psalm 23 is a psalm of trust because I think it's tremendously appropriate and important for us today. Isn't it interesting? A psalm that was written, recited, spoken for eons, thousands of years, can be so meaningful for us today in this 21st century. But it is. Because it asks the question, whom can I trust? Whom can I trust? Elected officials? Maybe not. Family? Sometimes. Friends? Yes, maybe. Co-workers? Mm, yes, on occasion. But they're all human, and they will all disappoint us at some point in our lives. And do I dare follow those people? Because that's what the shepherd is suggesting, the good shepherd. You follow the good shepherd. The sheep followed the good shepherd. Sometimes I follow people uh, that seem attractive in a lot of ways. Maybe they're intellectually attractive or they have great charisma. But lots of times those people disappoint us, don't they? Psalm 23 brings me back to the center, God. God does not promise me that everything will always be okay. That's not the promise. The promise is that God will be with me no matter what happens. 
step by step, all the way. So I've talked enough about Psalm 23. I'd like to offer you Psalm 23 with a few annotations. The Lord is my shepherd. My. It's personal. I shall not want. Whatever I need is provided. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Good food, plenty of nourishment. He leads me beside still waters. Do you know that sheep, if they got into a uh, water that flowed too fast, they might get carried away because their wool would get so wet and heavy. And so the shepherd took them by still waters. So I won't get tangled in those rushing torrents. He restores my soul. Ah, refreshment and new life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. God is the source of righteousness. We receive our righteousness from God. We don't find it on our own. We can walk in righteousness because God is God. And that's so true during this season of Easter because the resurrection tells us that because Jesus rose, Jesus stood up, we can stand up before God because our sins are not counted against us. I don't know about you, but that's very meaningful to me. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. You notice how the tense of the pronouns changes? It's you and me now. Even though I walk, you are with me. It's personal. God is with me. I'm not talking about God. I'm talking with God. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod was like a big stick, and that would, the shepherd would use that to beat away any animals that might come near, that would harm the sheep. And the staff, you know, the staff with a little crook on the end, that was what the shepherd used to pull the sheep away from dangers or the cliffs or something that might harm them. Again, the rod and the staff are always comforting because the sheep know that those are things that the shepherd uses to keep them safe. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You provide for me even when I'm in danger. You anoint my head with oil. Anointing can be a healing act. People were anointed with oil. Or it can be something to keep the sheep from being distracted by flies or bugs out in the open air all the time. Whatever the oil was used for, it was intended to be calming to the sheep. My cup runs over. My cup overflows. Not only am I provided for with what I need, but in abundance in abundance. Again, we have a generous God. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, my whole life long. It, that last sentence denotes a continuous presence of God. The Lord is my God, and I'm following that, that God, that shepherd. And the caveat is that I will dwell with God forever, my whole life long and into eternity. Forever has the flavor of being continuous, beginning now and lasting eternally. You know, it's intriguing to me that no matter how sophisticated we become, how modern our methods of communication how secular the landscape, that this very old song, this very old psalm, remains relevant to us. It's an indication that we cannot make it on our own. So when I ask, 
Who will help me? Who will stay with me? Who will guide me? The answer is still, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. The great thing about baptism is that the water we use uh, is just plain water from God's good earth. So we say, uh, in heavenly baptism, our gracious heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By the water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. Living with Christ and in communion with the saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Would the sponsors please present the child for baptism? I present Hadley Ann for holy baptism. I present Hadley Ann for holy baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit, Trusting in God's grace and the love of God, do you, Jackie and Jake, desire to have Hadley baptized into Christ? I do. As you bring Hadley to the, receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with these responsibilities. To live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace in all the earth. Do you promise to help her grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, say, I do. I do. I do. Cody and Casey, do you promise to nurture Hadley in this Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit? and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, say, I do. I do. I do. And you, friends, family, people of God, do you promise to support Hadley and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, say, we do. <laughs> I ask you now to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and to confess the faith of the church. I was telling the, um, the sponsors and the parents here that in the office before that in a way baptism is kind of an uh, exorcism. In the early church, that's what it was looked upon as. Now, I'm not talking about some sensational kind of exorcism like you see on movies or TV, but in a way, it's a way of saying no to something. You're saying no to the devil. You're saying no to everything that will separate you from God. You're saying no to all those things that um, can take God away from your life. And you're saying yes to this grace that God has given you. So I'm going to ask three questions. And um, I'm going to ask you to say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God if so, say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of the world that rebel against God? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, I renounce them. Now I'm going to ask uh, that we confess the, our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And I just would ask that if that's part of your faith confession that you just say it the best you can because I know it's hard when you don't have all the words in front of you. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the water, and your, your word created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death, and you raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that Hadley, who is here washed in the waters of baptism, may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Would you hold this for me? Now we pour water on Hadley's head three times, once in the name of the Father, once in the name of the Son, and once in the name of the Holy Spirit. Are you ready for this? She may enjoy this. <laughs> Does she like baths? Okay. Somebody called uh, baptism the great bath of the Christian church, so that's a good thing to remember, right? Okay. So how do we want to do this? You want to? There. Good. Okay. No, that's okay. Hadley Ann, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Boy, not a peep out of you. <laughs> that's pretty normal. Yeah, there you go. That has a nice cross on it. So here's a, a napkin that has a cross on it. Somebody in our congregation made that. Yes, thank you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, through the water and the Holy Spirit, that you give your sons and daughters new, new birth. You cleanse them from sin, and you raise them to eternal life. And now we make the sign of the cross on your forehead, and we say, Sustain Hadley and with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the gift of wisdom and power, the gift of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> She's smiling at me. <laughs> now, this sign of the cross means that you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. I don't know if you noticed the banner up here, that uh, it's our Lenten banner, but it says marked. So marked with the cross of Christ. So that cross of Christ goes with us always. Even though, um, you know, you can't see it, uh, it's there. And it's always part of our lives. So that's a good thing to remember. It's always part of our lives. Now, we have this um, candle here, and it has on it symbols of baptism. You'll notice the dove um, up on the top, and then uh, the, the baptismal shell, which is kind of the symbol here on, on this banner, and then three flames for the Holy Spirit, and then the baptismal font. And when, you, when we're done with the baptism, I hope you can come up here and look at this window. This window behind uh, Jake and Jackie is called the baptismal window. And you have to kind of look at it from a little bit of a distance, but you can see the dove coming down and, um, on the, from, the, from the up on high. And that's the idea that the uh, baptism is uh, the God descending on us. So, you want to light this? <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'll just let you keep that then. So, that light is the light of Christ in Hadley. And we say these words which are from the Gospel of Matthew. 
Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to God in heaven. So think about that. The light of Christ is in each one of us as we are baptized. And we want that light to shine, right? Mm -hmm. We want that light to shine and people to see it and see the light of Christ in our lives. So let's welcome Hadley. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. So, welcome. Let's welcome Hadley. Just say, welcome Hadley. Let us pray for the church and for all people in need. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving Shepherd, you know your own and your own know you. 
Your voice calls to us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Generous shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hope-giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need. Help us love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Saving shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community in our life together and give us vigor as people of faith. In the midst of challenges and opportunities, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We appreciate all the offerings that you have sent in by either my mail or online or brought to the church office. We truly appreciate that partnership in ministry. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now receive this blessing. May the glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Christ Jesus. The God of life, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.